Corn. You, you figured this equation out by yourself, Corn. Well, if I did the math right, it proves that you can't. It, it proves we didn't start that fire. Quentin, what are you doing? Now, the Oct 13 was the only one that we couldn't find that day. And our best guess for fall time with the Oct 12, which is exactly identical, was about 14 seconds. If you help me with the trig part, Quentin, we should be able to make a good guess where that rocket landed. Miss Riley, what's going on in here? They didn't start that fire, Mr. Turner. In the first place, you are not a member of this classroom. Neither are you, Mr. Turner. <laughs> Why don't you let the boy defend himself? And in the second place, this rocket proves nothing. You've already admitted having lost a number of your rockets. You cannot prove conclusively that another one of them didn't start that fire. Yes, I can. Oh. Are we to conclude, Mr. Hickam, that since leaving school, you've not only become an expert in rocket science, but in the field of trigonometry? I didn't say that. Obviously, I was a you learned more in the coal mines than you did in high school. <laughs> Let the boy talk. Go ahead, homie. Now, the fire was near Welch, just under three miles from our launch pad. And at the time of the fire, the best that we could do was 1.2 miles, which is exactly where we found that rocket, Mr. Turner. See, Mr. Turner, that rocket fell for about 14 seconds, which means that it flew to an altitude of 3,000 feet. According to the equation, S equals 1 half A T squared, where S is the altitude, A is the gravity constant, or 32, and T is the time it took for that rock to come back down. Velocity equals acceleration Get times Get time. Well, are you following this, Mr. Turner? <laughs> all right, we're all duly impressed. But do you mind telling me if you did not start that fire, who did? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. This one's gonna go for miles. <laughs>